Welcome back to the Tech Shack to a different kind of video. Today we have this wireless bridge kit by Omada and TP Link. Now, these kits used to be under their CPE branding and they also didn't used to be a kit. You'd have to buy one, each one individually, but now they're selling them as a kit. They've brought them under the Omada branding so they can use the Omada app and the Omada ecosystem. They have also done a few other things that I think are absolutely fantastic. All right. They have set up auto pairing, a feature I thought has been missing from these forever. They now have auto pairing. All right, so you, you can use the web UI for some of the more granular controls if you don't want to use the um, Omada app, but you can now use the Omada app. And again, instant pairing, and it supports active and passive PoE, and I think that was a big feature it was lacking alone, was the active PoE support, because anytime I deployed these, alongside Omada access points and Omada PoE um, switches, I still had to use an injector or a power adapter to, to get it to do the power negotiation. All right, because active PoE basically um, relies on negotiation from the device and passive PoE is expecting a set voltage. So, so they addressed the PoE issues, they've added auto pairing, they've added the abil ability to use the Omada app, and it has a standard DC jack. So if you want to like power it with a solar panel or a regular DC power adapter, you can. So way more versatile with power, way easier to set up now. That auto pairing is huge because in 90% of the situations I deploy these, I'm just using them as a point to point bridge. I don't need some of the other fancy um, settings that you can do in the web UI. But if you need the web UI, it's there. If you have the Umada app, it's there so this is going to be a vast improvement over the previous generation the only thing is it doesn't look like they include poe injectors anymore they did send me two poe injectors and a mount for the one that's going on the house outside and it says it's good for minus 40 degrees celsius up to 70 plus and i believe it because it gets 100 degrees fahrenheit here in the summer is a minus 30 in the winters and it survives every summer and every winter all right but let's get the guy open and then start running it through its paces Jordo forgot to mention the price at 89.99 if the speed and range claims hold true this is an amazing value considering comparable point-to-point -point devices can cost twice as much all right so inside the box you just have your bridge devices i'm going to keep calling them cpes by mistake because that's what they used to be called and that's what a lot of other companies still call them all right but amada is trying to bring these under their amada branding so and then we have a couple zip ties we have the manual now going through the manual it looks like it does indeed in fact support the amada app as well as the hardware and software amada controllers you can do manual configuration through the web browser and with this one, it actually supports DHCP from your device out of the box. You don't have to do some manual IP configuration to set it up for the first time. All right, and it supports multiple uh, main APs with other APs in client mode. So we're probably going to get into some of these other features in the software and stuff in a later video. For this video, this is the configuration we're going to use it for because it can provide the backbone between the tech shack and the house. And before we do that and get into its real speed testing, we're going to bring it out to the Wi-Fi proving grounds out back here and, and see if uh, its range claims hold up. These are claiming one kilometer. Now that is with, assuming at a kilometer you have somewhat usable internet, a couple megabits, right? They're not expecting full speed. That testing is going to be done between the house and the shop, which is more realistic for what you would use these for. But... Because we have all of this property with no Wi-Fi interference, no physical barriers, we're going to see how far I can stretch these out and make them usable and still have somewhat usable connection on the other end. All right, let's get them set up. All right, so this is the PoE injectors. The uh, AP goes on the PoE side, and then you switch plugs into the LAN side. And it has this little plate that's removable on the bottom. That's like a little wall mount. All right, now let's go outside to the CPE. So on the bottom of the device is three gigabit ports. The port furthest from the DC barrel plug is the one you use with PoE. 
both passive and active. It comes prepared so the one with the dip switch set to main is the one you plug into your main network and the one pre-configured as client will be the one you deploy downrange where you need internet and your network extended to. These devices are not only good for our application but any situation where you cannot run a physical cable but need to extend your network to. Even shorter runs like adjacent office buildings where parking lots and pavement prevent trenching a cable. This can be a good solution. All right, so we got this guy temp installed here. And we're gonna see how far we can go down there before we lose signal. I'm gonna start at a quarter mile, work our way back. Our Wi-Fi proving grounds is an unrivaled testing environment. Zero obstructions and zero competing Wi-Fi interference for up to 1.2 miles. We have a self-hosted speed test servers, multi-gig capable network not restrained by ISP limitations. The bottom line, if range and speed claims don't hold up here, there are zero excuses. All right, so we are at the quarter mile mark. Let's see what we got. And this thing is giving me a hard time because... Wow. Not what I was expecting. So quarter mile mark, it's almost like half of what it rates its max range at and we're getting over half its max speed. This is insane. What's the upload gonna be? Probably equal because of the same damn device. So like there's no antenna inadequacies. It is raining, my laptop's getting wet. Well, let's push it to the one kilometer mark and see where she goes. We backed it out to one full kilometer, maybe a couple feet over, maybe get 10, 20 megabit, that'll be great. Holy sh... Roll no. We are a kilometer away. Right at its max range. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This thing is absolutely insane. And this is the small one. They make a bigger one. That's crazy. So their max range is clearly not a lie. Because I haven't even tried to dial it in. I don't even think that's pointing exactly in the right direction. I think it's pointed off that way a little bit. Bring it back in, maybe that'll... Let's see what happens, huh? Oh my God, dude, it's gonna break. Yeah, I could dial in over 500 if I had it on the right mount. That is nuts. That's what these things are supposed to do. And knock off one I got a few months ago where they claimed to do this, and it was, I couldn't even get 100 megabits at a couple hundred feet. This is insane. All right, so we are running out of daylight. We are at 0 0.85 miles away. It is actually connected, but will we get anything worth a damn? Gee, oh my God, dude, this thing is insane. Are you, oh my God. How was the latency better? Probably because it's up high and probably has a clearer line of shot sight here, like a cleaner shot. This doesn't make sense. Well past dark, got one bar, it's down to the end of my road, so we are over a mile. This is it, and there's no going any further. Yeah, this is what I was expecting to see, uh, like the kilometer mark, not a mile.
Can't even see. This is nuts. 1.2 miles. I love this thing. All right, now that all the long range testing is done, we're gonna mount this one on the side of the house with this pole that they sent me. And then we're gonna replace the 710 CPE outside with the other one of these that's installed on the temp testing pole. And this is gonna permanently be the new um, backbone or backhaul link between the tech shack and the house. So all the house's internet and network data is gonna go um, between the two buildings with this because our Starlink comes in and actually feeds this building first and then we feed the rest of the property wirelessly. All right, so while we're getting this set up, I'm gonna go over how our network is currently laid out. So the internet comes in to the tech shack from Starlink. I have a two and a half and 10 gigabit switch and then I have the gigabit switch. So from the gigabit switch, it runs to the land side of the PoE injector I have right here. And then from the um, PoE side of the injector, it goes to this keystone jack, which runs to a uh, Cat6 direct burial cable that runs outside to our bridge device on the side of the tech shack. So let's go outside. All right, so we're outside of the tech shack. So that cable comes up and it feeds this EAP 211. It used to feed a CPE 710, but this guy gives me the same speed, actually better speed, honestly. Um, way more features, doesn't give me quite the same range as that, but I don't need that for this application. So this guy is gonna get retired. Rumor has it I might be able to get my hands on an EAP215, which is a more like modern replacement to that. So this guy is giving us a 700 megabit um, sequential link back and forth between the house and the tech shack. But we'll go over all of that and Rob will have some charts for you in a minute. But this guy goes, feeds this one here. This one is in client mode. All right, we use the auto pairing. We didn't even have to manually configure anything. Now, if you want to use the web UI and the Amada app, there's a lot of tools in there to help you point these and lock them in. But at this short distance, it was super easy. All right, this pole is rock solid. This is actually a really good mounting pole. I thought when they were going to send it to me, I was like, yeah, I got a bunch of them. And no, this one's actually really good. It's way more solid than some of the more expensive ones that are supposedly rated for satellite dishes. Can't really see the meter because of the way I have it mounted, but. We have rock solid signal. Like I said, we didn't need to use the app or anything else to help us point it. So let's go in the house and check out where it comes in there. All right, so cable comes in from that EAP 211 and feeds data to this PoE switch. And this PoE switch provides power for that EAP 211 as well as the outdoor access point we have mounted to the side of the house. And then this cable runs over to our sync thing server which is speed testing at a little over 700 megabits it's been absolutely phenomenal let's go speed test our wi-fi and then i'm gonna let rob recap everything with some charts and stuff all right now i'm actually in my oldest daughter's room i gotta get out of here before she catches me now despite having a wi-fi 7 um, usb wi-fi card she was still only getting about 100 megabits in here and that was because with the access point on the side of the house also acting as the CPE. Um, most of five gigahertz antennas had to engage with the CPE for backhaul. So only really left the 2.5 and maybe one five gigahertz antenna open for the rest of the house. So we're gonna run another local speed test. Yeah, like six times the speed. So when it comes to our proving grounds, it's simple. It's either exceeds expectations, meets expectations, or is just a straight up box of lies. Now range and speed are both a theoretical max. So for a minimum meets expectations passing score, it has to be stable and reliable at the rated max distance. For max speed testing, a single device should be able to at least hit half the theoretical max within a few feet. The only exception being cheaper Wi-Fi 7 access points with a gigabit uplink port. In that case, the uplink port should be the bottleneck. 
So when it comes to range testing, the EAP-211 absolutely exceeded expectations. It seems TP-Link took the much more conservative approach and rated its max range. The max before you get any sort of slowdown. Speed testing at over 500 megabits when pointed properly. Pushing at almost twice its rated range at 1.2 miles resulted in 175 megabits and a reliable usable connection. Well done! So when it comes to speed and real-world use case, it continues to exceed expectations. The EAP211 on the side of the house feeds the TP-Link PoE switch, which feeds an access point and a backup server. The backup server speed test at over 700 megabit. And the Wi-Fi devices speed test over 650 megabit. Now, this little guy is quite surprising. All right, so as you saw, this device is an absolute beast. And as you can see, I've been running these devices myself for generations. It's the first one that's ever been sent to me for free. I bought in these ones out of pocket. I've deployed dozens of them for clients. They survived, you know, minus 30 degree winters, 100 degree summers, and none of them have ever failed me. I can't see this one as being any different. Outdoor rated, completely waterproof, can handle the worst conditions. The only thing... All right, and this is like an industry-wide gripe. They fixed everything I've ever, and added stuff I didn't even know I wanted to this. But the one complaint I have is the way that the cable goes in. Now, as you can see, I had to tear a little bit more out than you're supposed to because none of these outdoor point-to-point -point devices seem to be designed to accept um, heavy outdoor-rated direct burial cables very well. All right, they always require a little bit of... Uh, prying a little bit of extra work a little bit more pressure on the cable than i'd like all right but at this price point and for what this thing does that is a minor gripe all right the auto pairing the ability to use the amount app everything like you can use this to like we're using here to provide internet between multiple buildings if even if it's just for security cameras a security system in this case running the, the complete wi-fi backbone between the house and the tech shack that feeds internet to the house and feeds internet to my three gamer daughters. All right, and if it can hold up here, it can hold up anywhere. All right, but that is it for this low quality video. I will see you guys in the next one.